All eyes are on Jerome Powell, and people want to know, what types of stock should we look at as interest rates appear to be nearing the summit? I'm going to make the case for dividends, and my top three stocks might surprise you. Let's get into it. So far, the tech giants have been propping up the market in 2023. In fact, the majority of the S&P 500 gains this year have come from just seven big tech companies, with little to no dividends. On top of that, these seven companies make up more than 28% of the S&P 500. In other words, the market is overly concentrated on tech and growth companies. Why do you think that is? Let's take a look at interest rates. Interest rates have risen faster now than they have in the past 35 years. This graphic really illustrates the relative difference between past rate hikes and now. Just look at how much more extreme the slope is, as well as the magnitude. We are also sitting at the highest federal funds rate that we have seen in the last 22 years. Now keep in mind, interest rates going up and down is nothing new. It is well documented that our economy tends to follow a boom-bust cycle. So there are some interesting patterns that we can take advantage of. The only difference now is the speed at which the rates have increased, which does change things slightly. So keep that in mind. More on that later. Do you know what kind of companies do well during an economic boom? You probably guessed it. Growth companies. A rising tide raises all ships. If the general market is confident that a company will grow, then people will buy that stock at a premium. If the economy slows, however, and the market is less confident in the growth of a company, then its stock price can drop significantly if it was previously trading at a premium. This graph shows the historical federal funds rate and the shaded regions represent U.S. economic recessions. Do you see the pattern? It holds true even as we go all the way back to 1957. Rates go up as the Fed attempts to cool down the economy to prevent extreme inflation. Then, only as rates go back down do we see an economic recession. Rates reach the peak whenever the Fed succeeds in slowing down the economy, and then as the economy enters a contraction, the Fed drops the rates. 1960 same deal as 1957. Rates go up to a peak. Then as rates fall back down, we have an economic recession. Again in 1970, 1975, early 1980s it happens, 1990 it happens, 2000 and 2007. We can even see a sliver of recession during COVID-19 that also corresponds with a rate hike and a subsequent rate fall. Now here we are at the end of 2023 and Jerome Powell has just paused the rate hike again. And we are sitting between 5.25 and 5.5%. The climb is starting to slow, which indicates we could be at the summit. Economic recession is likely in our future. That is an important data point as we consider which stocks are most likely to perform well going forward. We have to contend with high rates now and a possible economic recession later. So if I want to hone in on companies that are going to do well in recession, I like to look at two different categories. First, which sectors are most likely to do well? Here's a breakdown of the primary sectors that make up the U.S. economy and whether they are classified as cyclical or defensive. Cyclical means that a sector will go up when the economy does well and will go down when the economy goes down. In other words, the sector is strongly correlated with the economy. Defensive sectors, on the other hand, have a weaker correlation with the economy. That doesn't mean that they will necessarily go up when the economy goes down, but they are more insulated. When we look at the big seven tech companies and their respective sectors, we can see that they are all cyclical. Apple, Microsoft, NVIDIA are all in the info technology sector. Google and Meta are in the communication services sector, and Amazon and Tesla are in the consumer discretionary sectors. The defensive sectors include healthcare, energy, utilities, and consumer staples. They are all considered defensive because people will need to spend money in these categories whether the economy is in recession or not. Additionally, the defensive sector companies also tend to have a dividend, which leads me into my second category, value versus growth companies. A growth company is one that the market believes will grow. In other words, the price of the stock is very high compared to the current profitability. Typically, growth companies will not pay a dividend to shareholders because the company is reinvesting all of its profits back into the company for growth. A value company is just the opposite. The market does not believe a value company will grow necessarily, so its price stays lower. The price of the stock is very low compared to the current high profitability. Value companies generally do pay a dividend, especially if the company is not trying to grow very fast. As a rule of thumb, growth companies tend to perform better when the economy is booming and value companies perform better when the economy is in recession. So in conclusion, the big tech growth companies that are cyclical in nature will not perform well when the economy begins to contract. Therefore, I'm going to lean my portfolio more towards value stocks with strong dividends that are defensive in nature. Dividends are really good during a stock market crash because they are not affected by 
fear in the market nearly as much as the stock price. Even if the stock price drops well below its theoretical real value, the dividend will be paid out based on the real profitability of the company. If you find this valuable, please help me by smashing the like button down below. My first goal is to help you make more money and save more money. My second goal is to monetize this channel within the first year. Thanks for the support. I'm looking for companies that have a solid history of maintaining their dividend even through past stock market crashes. The first dividend stock is in the healthcare sector and is therefore considered to be a defensive company. It will be well insulated from a market downturn because healthcare needs are largely independent of the economy. It also has a huge dividend yield at the moment, 4.46%, which is nearly three times the dividend yield of the S&P 500, which is currently sitting at 1.51%. Keep in mind though, having a high dividend yield is one thing, but the company has to be rock solid. That dividend is not gonna do you any good if the company just poops the bed when the economy slows down, especially when an economic decline is your prediction and you're trying to be defensive. You can't just look for high dividend yields. You have to drill down and evaluate the company. The first metric I wanna see is how many years has this company consistently grown its dividend? My favorite resource to use for this is Seeking Alpha. Let's check out the dividend tab and click on the dividend history subtab. When we set the duration to the max, showing us the dividends paid since 1989, it has never missed or reduced the dividend. Every year, the dividend either stays the same or grows for 34 years. The dot-com bubble pops in 2000, you get a dividend. In 2008 financial crisis, you still get a dividend. COVID-19, you still get a dividend. I also like to look at the historical dividend yield. If the dividend yield is higher now than it is normally, then the company could be trading at a relative discount. And sure enough, the dividend yield is at an all-time high. We can also check out the valuation tab and see that Seeking Alpha scores this company very well. The PE ratio is less than half of the sector median. It is definitely a value stock. Seeking Alpha will also give a dividend scorecard, which is nice to quickly evaluate the dividend as well. It scores very well in all of these metrics, dividend in safety, growth, yield, and consistency. Keep in mind that a lot of the tools and features that I use on Seeking Alpha are only available if you pay for a yearly subscription. Personally, I get a lot of value from using these tools. If you would too, you can get $50 off if you use my affiliate link in the description below. Use the extra 50 bucks to get some more dividend stocks. Back to the video. The final thing I like to check is the company's financials. I wanna see that they are growing their revenue and profit. Dividends are not the end all be all. We still wanna see capital gains. Total revenue revenues and gross profits have consistently increased over the last 10 years. Bristol Myers Squibb is a worldwide biopharmaceutical company. Bristol Myers Squibb has a solid high yield dividend with growing revenue seems to be trading at a solid discount. I will be adding Bristol Myers Squibb ticker BMY to my portfolio. The second dividend stock that I'm adding to my portfolio, manufacture and market consumer and professional products worldwide. It has a ridiculously safe dividend yield at 3.9%. It has paid a dividend every year for 46 years and raise their dividend every year for 46 consecutive years. You get a dividend, you get a dividend. On top of that, the dividend is at a 10 year high, meaning that you are getting a relatively good deal. The PE ratio is not lower than the sector medium, but I'm willing to live with that since the yield is so high relative to the past. Finally, looking at the revenue and profit over the last 10 years, we can see that it has consistently increased both. Seeking Alpha gives the company an A growth score as well. So I will be looking to see the stock price go up in the future along with the dividend. I imagine most people have heard of the Clorox company. The Clorox company has a rock solid dividend with growing revenue, seems to be trading at a solid discount. I will be adding the Clorox company ticker CLX to my portfolio. The last dividend stock I want to look at is not a defensive sector company. It's actually cyclical. Real estate is somewhat correlated with the economy, but rental income tends to increase every year independent of the stock market. If the stock market drops in value, I will just be looking to buy more. The dividend ratio is already insane at 6.14 percent and is currently very close to a 10 year high. It also has a very consistent dividend. So anytime I see it above 5%, I consider increasing my position. Look at the dividend history, 25 years of dividend payments and 25 consecutive years of dividend growth. This is an Oprah dividend company right here. If we also look at the financials, it has grown their revenue every year for the past 10 years, especially since 2019, they have more than doubled their revenue. This is a company that I will definitely be watching very closely if we experience a drop in the real estate sector.
sector. Realty Income Corp is actually a REIT, which stands for Real Estate Investment Trust. It has a solid high yield dividend with growing revenue, seems to be trading at a solid discount. I will be adding Realty Income Corporation with stock ticker O to my portfolio. Having a diversified portfolio is very effective at mitigating losses from a stock market crash. A large portion of my portfolio is in ETFs, so I can be sure that I'm not too overly exposed to any one sector or company. That being said, I will lean my portfolio one way or the other, depending on market conditions, which is what I'm trying to do now. I want to lean my portfolio towards defensive dividend stocks that are trading at a discount. There's a real chance that we will be seeing an economic recession in the coming months. If you want to learn more about the different indicators and clues hinting towards market crash, then click on this video. That way you won't wake up in the middle of the night screaming, Jerome Powell. Until next time.